welcome back to the Cactus Quest channel. I am your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I bring you a special guest, Jeremy Spath, the owner of Hidden Agave Nurseries. We did a little interview at his nursery in Escondido, as well as we spent a couple of days exploring through the habitats of the California-Nevada border looking for agave utahensis. I really hope you enjoy the episode. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, like the video, leave a comment, and, and let me know if there's any place that you'd like to see me go, or anybody that you'd like to see me interview in the plant world. And without further ado, I give you... Sure, I'm Jeremy Spath. Um, I own Hidden Agave Nursery and uh, have a landscape construction business and a little tissue culture business growing Art. mainly agaves. How did plants, I mean, you're completely surrounded by plants, yeah. both in your greenhouses and all around your yeah, house. My life is plants. How did this happen? Uh, good question. I mean, I grew up with a mother who was an um, avid gardener, avid plant person, would take us to botanic gardens growing up. And I would never really sought or got into it. And um, I mean, I just remember like botanic gardens, like there were no animals. And I, I, I remember this kind of odd smell about it. I just never liked going, you know, as a little child, you know how we perceive things, you know, when we're kids differently than now. But fast forward, I was about 32 or three, living in this little studio apartment in um, Lucadia. Uh, and uh, and I had this little strip of dirt out in front of it. It was like, you know, a foot wide by like 10 feet. And it was always kind of depressing to me because there was nothing planted in it. Come home from work one day, it was on my birthday, and my girlfriend at the time had planted it all out. And literally, that's what started it. I mean, that's what just started me falling down the rabbit hole and um, soon got a job at San Diego Botanic Garden. After that, um, I quit the job I was doing, got fully into plants, worked there for about five years and uh, left to do my own landscape uh, contracting business and to work at Rancho Soledad Nurseries, which gotcha. I did up until here. And you mm -hmm. learned how to do tissue culture working at Rancho Soledad? No, actually I learned it. Um, there was a guy named Alan Rapashi who was into plants for a while and he built a lab with Kelly Griffin up in Bonzel. And after it was built and they got things going, they brought me on board and kind of taught me how to do it so they didn't have to do all like the regular cooking and making the media and doing all the stuff that it takes. So, gotcha. I, so that's how I, I learned it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I was totally mixed up on that. I thought, yeah, okay, cool, cool. You know, we got to go out and spend a few days out in habitat, yep. searching for agaves and hiking around and trekking down dirt roads and stuff. And you'd mentioned to me, and I'm in total agreement with this, that being in Habitat is your favorite place. Yeah. Uh, and you also mentioned that it's kind of, seeing the plants out there is kind of spiritual. It, it is. And I was hoping you could kind of elaborate on that for, for me and for my audience, because I kind of feel the same way, and I'm always curious to like what that means for you. Yeah, and that, that's a really t tough answer, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff is, is, is really personal, you know, so it's kind of, and it's hard to put into words. Even though I, I think I can put most of the things I, I feel into words, for some reason just, there's just a, you know, I mean, look, we are nature, right? That's what we're made of. So I think when we're out in these areas that are so pure, it has an effect on us. But also, you know, I, I do landscape, I try to mimic natural looking um, um, things that I've seen in the wild and people's gardens. And there's nothing that will ever match up to what you see with these. You know, almost every step along the way, you can stop and there'll be just this grouping of rocks with a neat plant on it, or maybe not even the plant you're looking for, but there's some cool ferns you didn't know about growing underneath, or some moss, and there's just so much going on there that, it, that it's just, I, it's just, you know, it's fascinating. It's just what I love. And who knows why we like what we like, but, but uh, I feel, I, if I haven't gone anywhere in a month or two, out into the wild to go see plants in the wild, I really start to get uncomfortable in my skin. You know, it's like I got to get back out there. So I don't, I don't really know how to how to say it, but like, um, you know, nature is much more powerful than we are. So when we're out in those areas and just being within it, it's just, it just, it feels right to me. You know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
There's a, I, I have an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old, and they're constantly asking what my favorite thing is, you know? <laughs> What's your favorite color? What's your favorite, um, you know, one of my dolls? But and favorites are tough. You know, they're really tough. And, and um, I have a friend who always says my favorite plan is the one I'm looking at. And, and that makes sense. You know, it's kind of the, whichever one you're in. But, I, I mean, to me, the ones we went and saw, the, the Ybor Spinas are probably my favorite agave, but it's not necessarily my favorite habitat. You know, I mean, there's so many areas in, in Mexico that are, that are just, you know, they're, they're, they're just so beautiful and, and stuff that you think you would have known about. It's so beautiful, like national park kind of stuff, but there's nobody there. Right. You know, and these places are abundant. And, um, and I guess I could just say my favorite thing is anytime we, we come up into a new habitat and it's really something unexpected and you just see stuff that, that there's, so, I mean, you might go there for one plant, but there's so much more that you get to see. And well, I was just saying, you can't help but drive by every mountainside and say, you know, I wonder if there's anything over there, you know, but, and then you look for any road and there's no real good access. So you'd have to foot it. And how long is it going to take you to go up and down that one? Well, what about the That's ridge a camp behind you're it? camping. Yeah, and what about the ridge behind that? And what about, are you, if you go over there and you're like, oh, I don't see anything over here. What about way down there? You know, and that's really the difficulty with all this stuff. And that's why most plants that are found, new species, are by new roads that are built. Right. You know, I've, I've said this for years. Jetpacks were supposed to be around by now. If there were jetpacks, botanizing would get much, much easier and a lot more new species would be found. So, I, I remember when I was first getting into plants, or actually into seeing plants in habitat, I'd done a few trips into Mexico to see cycads and other things and um, I was still working at, at San Diego Botanic Garden and we went to go buy some plants at Rancho Soledad Nurseries and I was going around in the golf cart with Kelly Griffin and you know just looking at all this stuff and, and just jaw dropping these plants and the stuff he did and I was fascinated by it and I said look Kelly I'm if you're ever going to Mexico again I, I'd love to join and I don't, I think it was just a few weeks later that he called me up and said, Hey, I'm going down to Oaxaca. Would you like, would you like to go? And I said, I said, yes, let's go. And I was also, and I remember I, I didn't really know him and I hadn't been down before. And I, my, uh, my, uh, mentor for landscaping at the Botanic Garden was this guy, older guy, Bill Teague, real well known throughout San Diego for his gardens. And he said, look, Jeremy, you go on that trip and you will be friends with Kelly the rest of your life. And I, I have found that to be true. So we drove, just the two of us, to Oaxaca and back, which is a couple thousand miles if you do just, you know, straight. But we were going all through mountains, doing all sorts of stuff, just gunning it everywhere we went, running up and down mountains, right. seeing some of the most gorgeous plants. And um, I'll, I'll, never, I'll, I'll never forget that trip because it was just a completely different experience than the prior trips I'd taken. We were going... Uh, for many things, but one was Agave Elmitiana. And at the time, Elmitiana was really only known as a plant that had been taken back by the Spanish and was grown at Kew Gardens. And no one had any uh, pr um, provenance of where they came from. Interesting. And Coors Cactus, who's out of Germany and he sells seed, yeah, yeah, yeah. was traveling around Oaxaca and looking for Talantias and said he saw something that looked similar to it and he told Kelly about it. And so we went down there and we didn't know exactly where it was and we were looking all around in this area and I remember Kelly kind of ready to give up in a lot of ways and, and, and I said, look, let's, let's just talk to the locals. Let's just see what they say. And we stopped and, and we said, look, we're looking for maguey you know, in a, a maguey, which is agave in Spanish, without teeth, you know, a soft leaf one, because a lot of maguey is just a broad term. Right. And, and um, this woman said, oh yeah, I, I, I know where that is. You know, it grows behind my father's house. You know, uh, we were a little suspicious, but we were like, let's go. I said, she's like, okay, let me hop in the car and give me a ride down, you know, down here and, and, and I'll take you there. So we drive down the road for several miles and stop and get out of the car and walk into this path, into this jungly forest, Talantias and all things wonderful, you know, growing everywhere. And she goes, my father, he's the, he 
he's the local medicine man. He's the he's like the shaman here. We get to his house, and it's just this little you know ramshackle place in the mountains. And behind his house, covered on the mountainside, was a Gabriel Mitiana. And uh, and that's where all the plants you see in cultivation now came from. But well, uh, that was very exciting. And to, to wrap it up, we drove back 12 days down to Oaxaca and back, seeing more habitats than I can remember. And I absolutely passed out on, in our hotel in Tucson. Could barely get up at the end. And when my energy came back, all I wanted to do was go back. Yeah. Just Just really always realizing that that there's so much more out there and that there are these just extremely special beautiful places that that um that you just don't even really think about and then once you're in them that that's probably my favorite thing when i'm out looking for plants and this this is uh this is one area that even though if you look around you see all these spikes and you see all these plants you go oh well there's tons of plants it looks pretty healthy, but this has been a heavily poached area because a lot of the teeth here on a lot of the plants used to have what's called merged spines. Right. You know where they have these thick, wider spines? And the first time I came out here, I mean, we, there weren't like, I would say, I would say probably 15 to 20% of the population would have that. And now I, I, last time I was here, now we just got here, I, I never saw one. With uh, so many plants and animal species being threatened by poaching, uh, deforestation, urbanization, and the changes in the climate, what role do you see yourself playing in conservation with the work that you're doing, or do you see the type of work that you do as, as playing a role in conservation? Oh, absolutely. Um, without question, I, I think, you know, when we can have more of these unusual species because those are the ones that are getting poached it's not the stuff that you can already get in cultivation that's widespread it's the stuff that's recently found or hasn't been in cultivation or is you know a rare plant when those things can become available you know for reasonable prices uh, i think it takes a big lift off off the plants and habitat so why if i'm a guy who wants you know say um 20 of some agave species that that I can get over at Jeremy's nursery, why would I go down to um, Mexico or some or any country and risk digging them out and, and getting them out, oh, through customs and, and back home to wherever I live? You know, so I think the more we can make these 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 rare plants available, then then uh, the, the more pressure we can take off them being taken out of the wild. So what role do you see your average collector being able to play in conservation as a whole if there is one well i i think the first thing is don't buy field collected plants you know because they're out there and I, I if you're brand new to this thing it's 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 tough to tell you know which one's field collected and which one's called even when you've been doing this for a while because there can be some plants like like we were talking about this one earlier that's uh, you know this is utah incessi borospina right there's, 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 you're getting dug out of the wild like crazy, but this is a seed grown plant, right. you know, from a collection. But how many people walk in here and go, oh my God, look at that. That looks like it was dug out of the wild. Right. So, it, I mean, it can still be tough, but I, I think that's the, f that's the first thing. And really, really, I mean, there's, there's like two types of people in this world. There are those who, um, I think just knee jerk want to protect these special places where these plants grow and these plants. And there's kind of, and then there's the other person that says, uh, I, I want those in my collection. I want those in my garden. You know, let, I, let's just take them out. And I, I just think people are just wired differently. You know, I don't really know why one reacts one way and the other reacts the other, but I think the more we can kind of just shed light on the beautiful plants and where they grow and, and say, hey, you know, you love these plants. You can look at this landscape and say it's a beautiful spot. Wouldn't you want your child to see this in the same exact way? Wouldn't you want their child to be able to see it? Because right now, the way it's being done is we're taking all these things out and nobody else is gonna be able to experience what you just experienced. Right. You know, and so I, 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 I don't know. I, I wish there was one big sweeping answer, but I, I don't know. I really don't. 
Can you tell me a, uh, a little bit about your upcoming book that you're oh, doing? Oh, yeah. What, what about my upcoming book with, with Jeff Moore? Yes. Yes, yeah. Well, we were hoping to have it finished and printed by Christmas, but um, the post-production and what I mean by that is making sure all our I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, the pictures are right, everybody gets the proper photo credit in it. You know, everything is right has been, has been a months long thing. So I think we, we, I was actually meeting with him and the des designer this morning. I'd say we're on the three yard line heading towards the goal line. So, so I, I, we should be done with it in about a month. It's a sweeping review of the genus. Um, and I, it's got a lot of amazing photos in it. I, I, I think it's going to be a really nice book. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. Is there anything I should ask you that I didn't ask you? I don't know. I think that sums it up. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 That's it for the video. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and uh, stay tuned because there's more to come. Peace.